Hey guys, in this video, I have reviewed 21 browsers for their privacy features. Most browsers claim various things, but do they really respect your privacy? You will know the reality of all their claims. I have created four tiers, privacy stronghold, satisfactory, could be better, and risk to privacy. I will review features of all 21 browsers and put them in their respective tier one by one. So. Keep watching the video to know how much your browser cares for your privacy. The first one, Chrome, is the most used browser. It comes from Google, and they are both well known for feeding on users' data. There is no privacy protection. It doesn't have tracker blocking, anti-fingerprinting, or anything to protect your data. So. It is going under the risk to the privacy tier. Microsoft's browser Edge, built on the Chromium platform, is another data-hungry browser. There are some features like tracker blocking, but they don't completely block it and lack anti-fingerprinting. Edge is also going to be in the same spot as Chrome. Midori is an open source and lightweight web browser. The browser focuses on speed and customization, but doesn't enforce strict privacy protocols. The browser has features like ad blocking and tracker blocking, but they aren't that efficient. Its primary focus is on being low memory consumption, but for privacy, it needs improvement. Commodore Dragon Browser claims to have features like Chrome and Firefox, plus enhanced security. Although I find there are serious privacy issues, it doesn't have ad and tracker blocking, nor does it check for fingerprinting. It focuses more on functionality, but it could be better if it focuses more on privacy. So it is going into the could be better tier. SRWare Iron Browser claims to be better than Google Chrome. It claims to be lightweight on system resources with enhanced security, but in reality, it just has some less efficient security protocols and lacks serious privacy features like blocking invisible trackers, disabling fingerprinting, and ad blocking. It is going to be in the could be better section. Now comes the Opera. The browser has some good features like inbuilt VPN, ad, and tracker blocking, but lacks strong privacy strongholds like anti-fingerprinting. Also, there are some concerns that the company is collecting users' data for targeted ads and sharing it with third parties and its parent company. So I am going to put it into the could be better tier. LibreWolf Browser has some good privacy offerings. It is a Firefox-based fork with enhanced features like no telemetry, ad blocking, anti-tracking, and anti-fingerprinting. These features look promising, but some of its essential features, like ad blocking and anti-fingerprinting, rely on third-party services. I'm going to put LibreWolf in the satisfactory tier. Now it's the turn of the Vivaldi Browser. The company has strict rules that it doesn't collect users' data, like usage analytics or user profiling, plus it has features like ad and tracker blocking. It also has a feature called Privacy Guard, which hides the real IP address of users, although the browser doesn't have anything good for stopping fingerprinting. So I am going to put it into the satisfactory tier. Basilisk Browser is based on the Firefox architecture. The USP of this browser is that it comes with features that Firefox has removed, so it can be considered a Firefox legacy browser. But there isn't anything for privacy. It doesn't have ad or tracker blocking, anti-fingerprinting, or anything that prevents websites from collecting your data. So it is going to be in the risk to privacy tier. Now comes Firefox, once the most used browser before Chrome. Let's see where it stands on the privacy tier. The browser has some good privacy features, such as tracker blocking and anti-fingerprinting, which need to be activated from the advanced settings. The downside of this browser is that telemetry is activated, meaning it collects some of your data. So I'm going to put it into the could be better tier. Waterfox browser, which is a Firefox fork, offers several strong privacy features. It comes with zero telemetry data collection, enhanced tracking protection, private search, and DNS over oblivious HTTP, which is used to hide your DNS requests from your internet provider. You might need to look into its advanced settings to enhance the privacy even more. 
Waterfox is going to be in the Privacy Stronghold tier. The next browser we have is Chameleon. This browser lacks even basic privacy protection features, such as no tracker blocking, anti-fingerprinting, and ad blocking. Also, the browser gets very few updates over time, whereas in the modern world, everything changes quickly. So it is going to be a risk to privacy. Avast Secure Browser comes with several privacy protection features. It has anti-tracking, an ad blocker, a privacy guard, and a bank mode that can be used for secure banking transactions. Despite having these features, Avast has a history of tracking users' data. That's the reason it is going in the could be better tier. FloorP Browser is developed by some students in Japan, which is based on the Firefox browser. The browser impresses us with some good features like no telemetry, open source, and uBlock origin integration. However, it lacks a few features like anti-fingerprinting, frequent updates, and many privacy features are not enabled by default. I'm going to put it in the satisfactory tier. Safari browser comes up with several good features like intelligent tracking protection, fingerprint protection, and IP address protection with iCloud Plus subscriptions. The browser is good for basic privacy protection, but when it comes to advanced features, there are some gaps. The fingerprinting protection is weak, and it gets fewer updates compared to other browsers. So it is going to be in the satisfactory privacy. Yandex browser is well known for its data collection. It collects information like device identifiers, browsing history, and reads pages that you browse. There is no decent tracker protection or fingerprinting protection. If you are even a little bit cautious with your privacy, you won't use this browser. Now comes the Brave browser. Like its name, it is very brave in blocking websites that want your data. The browser is well known for its capability to block ads. However, it isn't limited to only one. It perfectly blocks all trackers, has strong fingerprinting protection, and forces websites to use a secure connection. It itself never collects your data. This browser deserves the Privacy Stronghold title. Beaker Browser is an experimental project that concentrates on the peer-to-peer -peer network. The browser itself is good, but not for privacy. It doesn't have features like tracking protection, anti-fingerprinting, or ad blockers. The browser doesn't collect your data itself, but also doesn't stand firmly against other websites. It is going to be in the could be better tier. DuckDuckGo browser is well known for its search engine. The search engine offers full anonymity. The browser also has some good privacy features like tracker blocker, enforces secure connection, and doesn't track your data like your browsing history and search history. I am going to put it in the satisfactory section. The next one is the Min browser. The browser focuses on the minimum design principle, but its privacy features are also minimal. It doesn't have a tracker blocker, anti-fingerprinting, or ad blockers. It might be good for people who like minimal design but don't care about privacy. It is going to be in the risk to privacy tier. Our last browser for this video is the Tor browser. It has strong privacy protection features like fingerprinting protection, IP address hiding, no data collection, session-based cookies, and multi-layered encryption. The browser is good when you want to become anonymous on the internet. However, it has a history of known vulnerabilities that can be exploited to access your data. That's the reason it is going in the satisfactory tier. These were the 21 browsers and their actual privacy protection status. Now that you know the reality, it's time to switch to a browser that respects your privacy. If you have liked the video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and don't forget to share it with your friends.